Morning Scott's Chapel, all of the saints out there on the online land. We praise God for the end of this conference here. And we praise Him for His mighty works oh, yes. that He has proclaimed and that He shall proclaim. And we will go forward in the love and grace and mercy. And we have thank yes. want to thank you also for participating on the online ministry and on the giving, and on just your total service to the Lord. And with that, praise God from whom all blessings flow. And we'll have minister to with Johnson to come and lead us in our opening hymn. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And the song says, I'm so glad I'm here. So glad so glad I'm here in Jesus' name. I'm so glad I'm here. I'm so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, I'm so glad.
Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The subject we want to look at is the mission of the harvest. All right. The mission of the harvest. The reason why I wanted to look at this passage one more uh, time in prayer because of the ills that we are going through. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing in our society, what we're seeing in the church. Oh, yes. I believe we're seeing a spirit of independence, of selfishness, mm -hmm. of the wrong attitudes. All right of being scattered. There are no real meaning relationships. We don't socialize with our neighbors Come on like we ought to and like we used to. Come on now. We don't fellowship one with another even within the church. Have you called some of your members? Have you talked to some of your friends while we're online? Have you checked on some of our elders? Come on. It's not just the job of the pastor to do that. It's the job of each and every one of us Amen. to look out for one another and to develop those relationships. But what I see is we're living in a me culture. People are jumping from job to job, relationship to relationship, marriage to marriage, and church to church. Come on. Many times because of selfishness. What about me is the attitude of most folk today. Come on. We may not articulate those words, but our lives reflect a what about me attitude that has given birth to a generation coming up that has adopted the attitude of entitlement or a have it your way mentality. The government should provide for us. The school should cater around me. The workplace should be more flexible with me. The church should minister to me. And speaking of the church, I'm seeing more and more folk in our culture that come to church looking for the ways that the church can bless them. What can you do for my children? What are you going to do for my teenagers? I need contemporary music. Or someone says, I, I want some old hymns. I like expository preaching. I like thematic preaching. I like it where y'all don't dress up and I can come any way I want to. I don't like I don't think it's the church unless the choir has robes on and responsive readings are a part of the service. I need a church where they'll help me to pay my bills this month. Somebody to call me if I miss a Sunday. All right. Preach. I tell you, we want to have it our way religion. And to quote Rick Warren, Pastor Rick Warren in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, is 
not about you. No, no. It's about Jesus. About he is our reason. He is our purpose. He is our meaning. He is our way. He is our truth. And He is the life. See, we may worship more about ourselves than about God. How many times have you heard people or you've left the service only to complain? I didn't get anything out of it today. Come on. We make statements that are saturated with self. As if worship is all about you. Why can't we sing more songs that I like? I can't believe so-and-so didn't talk to me today. Here's the problem. Worship isn't about what you get. Come on. It's about what you give to God. That's it. Unfortunately, we have fallen short trying to make everybody happy. God has become disgusted with our obvious worship and preoccupation with ourselves. When God gets upset, when he gets disgusted, all right, all right. he shuts stuff down. Maybe that's why we worship it online. Maybe that's why nobody's meeting on Sunday. Because God has not been pleased with our worship. But Jesus had compassion. He says, look at the people. Come on. The harvest truly is plenteous. It is. But the labors are few. Yes. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Yes. We are all to be working in God's harvest field. Yes, that's it. I said the introduction to <laughs> where the reason why we're not getting anything out of the church that you have been attending is because you have not put nothing in to the church that you attended. Come on now. You are not a worker doing the will of the Father. We should be about our Father's business. He has sent us, called us to His glory, and He has sent us into the harvest field to minister. Yeah. This passage this morning reminds us that we live in a world full of lost people in desperate need of salvation. And when left to themselves, You, 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 you see what's in our covenant. When left to ourselves, right now, you've experienced the health care. All right. When left to ourselves, left to ourselves. You, you're making minimum wage, but they're making over seven figures. My God. When left to ourselves. There are people struggling. There shouldn't be any homeless people in America. That should not be children, disabled veterans, struggling with no shelter, no clothing, no food. In one of the richest countries of this world, oh, the harvest truly is plenty. Yes. In this text, Jesus looked across the multitude and referred to them as sheep without a shepherd. Mm. God cares. Oh, yes, he he was moved with compassion. But he made the statement that there wasn't enough people that were willing to do the work of evangelism. And that's what we're called to do. If we are truly saved and called and workers of Christ, then we are to be in Him and abide in Him and then go and do what He says to do. If the stuff is not done, it's because, look, 
This is the basics of Christianity. Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the body. You are a part of the body. You might be a thumb, a finger, a hand, an elbow, a knee, a toe. But you are the body. So if nothing was picked up with the hand, it's because the hand did not cooperate with the head. Come on now. Mm. It's good. See, it is God's desire to see lives transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The question in the text is, do we desire what God desires? Yes. From this question, it seems that from the behavior of most churches and Christians, that we don't desire what God desires. God desires for us to be like Christ. Yes. Shaping into his image. Right. Look at the text. Look at the text. Come on, the mission of Christ was threefold. Speak. To minister. To demonstrate compassion. And to call workers. Then the text says in verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So the mission of the harvest is to minister. Yeah. Jesus had but one method in reaching people. He went out. He didn't sit back and wait for people to come to him. Luke says it like this in Luke 19 and 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's it. It's rather foolish of us to sit back and wait for people to come to us. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of people will not come. Mm -hmm. They don't know to come. Come on now. We have to go after them. That's why Jesus commanded us in the Great Commission, go therefore and teach. There was no place that Jesus didn't go minister. That's it. And when he got there, he taught. Come on now. He preached. He healed. You see, he did that because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah. You want to know why a lot of Christians and a lot of our lives are jacked up is you haven't heard anything. Come on now. Oh, you heard your crazy friend. You heard your crazy family member. They jacked up and crazy and don't know nothing anyway. And I know you're not listening to the White House. All right now. Or to the news. Is it just me? Or do they not know when it's going to rain? All right now. Amen. And we're looking at charts and stuff and predicting. Don't y'all predict nothing because you got it wrong in 2016. Come on now. I digress. People need to hear the message. That's it. They need to hear the gospel and talk the details of the message and how to apply it in our lives. Oh. Yes, you've been in church. Yes, you heard preaching. But have you applied what it is that you heard? Applied it, yes. Most of the time, you forgot what you heard when you get to the door. And we never practice His presence. The Word. Mm. And the only way we can know how to live this life from day to day is to be taught the details of the gospel. It amazes me that we waste all this time in school to learn how to do photography, to learn how to sing, to learn how to do computers, to learn how to do coding, to learn how to do everything. And yet you come to a church and expect in five minutes that you can walk on water. All right. That you can cast demons out. Lord have mercy. Jesus, Jesus. 
The gospel message is this to hear and then to do. Yeah. The gospel is the good news from on high. It is no matter what I've done in my past and in my life, that no matter who you are, God so loved the world. He loved you. Yeah. He loves me. That's it. And he wants us to be with him for eternity. The good news is that God sent his son, Jesus, yes. to die for us. To give us new life and to cleanse us from all our sin. Yes. To turn us around. Thank you, Lord. Yes, part of the mission is to minister the good news. Secondly, the mission of the harvest is to show compassion. It says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep with having no shepherd. God demonstrated his compassion. Yes. He was moved over the physical needs, mm -hmm. hunger, pain, and suffering. He saw them all. And he looked and he saw those three things. It's, it's right there. He saw the multitude. He was moved with compassion. We need to be moved with compassion too. Oh yes. Thank you, Lord. That's what the harvest is about. That's right. The church isn't just on Sunday. We should go out from Sunday to every day of the week doing and ministering something. Matter of fact, the church is not this building, it is you. You, that's right. So wherever you work, wherever you go, wherever you shop, you ought to be a light. You ought to be the gospel message walking and breathing. You ought to be God's hands helping somebody. Help us, Lord. Help us. That is the mission. That's it. And when Jesus saw it, oh, he had compassion. And lastly, the mission of the harvest is to call workers. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I saw them without a shepherd. Mm -hmm. They went astray, just the sheep. They had no leader. There was no one to teach the truth. They were sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, truly, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I hope and pray that you are a laborer. All right now. I hope and pray that you have received the call of God, which you have. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we have to fund the operation mm -hmm. through our tithes and through our offerings. We got to fund the operation of the harvest with our time and with our talents and with our gifts. Thank you, Lord. You are the hand to help somebody. That's right. Each and every one of us are linked together in the body, helping to move and to coordinate and to do all of these things. If, if we did what we were supposed to do, this world wouldn't be in this mess it is in. Amen. There wouldn't be hungry and homeless people. There wouldn't be people confused and hurting and disgruntled in relationships because we would have a pathway for them to escape and lift them out. We got to do the call, but some reject the call. Mm -hmm. Some postpone the call. Oh. Some deny the call. Some just ain't got the commitment. Come on now. Some are just satisfied with right where you are. <laughs> you know a pig is satisfied laying in the mud. Mm -hmm. I know some dogs who just sit right in their own poop. Mm -hmm. We have become comfortable 
was crazy. We are seeing this in our nation. We have become a nation that is comfortable with crazy. With stupid. It's kind of entertaining for us. And we have a people that are comfortable letting somebody else do it. Not taking personal responsibility. Mm. My beloved, you are where you are because where you choose to be. Mm -hmm. You chose to be where you are. You chose to be pulled and dragged to the pool of Bethesda every day. You chose to be lame, crippled, and crazy. Mm -hmm. You chose on, the life in the conditions that you are living in. But the good news is you can choose to move out of that. You can choose to go higher. Yes. You can choose to have a better life. An abundant life. But you must choose wisely. Yes. So the challenge is to proclaim God's Son Jesus. Oh, yes. That he is the hope mm. of all our complex personal and social problems. Come on now. Just recognize that we're starving for God's word and we don't know it. You're being offered a whole bunch of substitutes. Mm. And I'm sorry on Facebook and on YouTube, land <laughs> that I don't see. Come on. That I don't look good. That I don't talk right. That I'm not entertaining. That I'm not burning back. But what I got. The solution is. Pray for the Lord. Of the harvest to send workers. Pray that God would open the hearts. And mind of those within his church. To answer the call. Pray that we pick up where Jesus left off. And he says, greater works will you do that I have done. Because I live in you. And watch and see what God can do. God bless you. God smile upon you. The mission of the harvest is to do the will of the Father. Happy Sunday.
Oh, yeah.